All right, let's go back to last week and get just a few thoughts and wrap, wrap that game up so we can get into this week. Uh, last week, I thought our preparation was good. We had a good open date. We had fresh legs. We had guys ready to play, and it looked like it. Uh, you know, for, the, for three quarters, we played as about as good as we played since I've been here, physically and mentally. And our whole uh, philosophy for the last two weeks going into that game was play smart because we hadn't played smart at all in a lot of situations. Now, we did make mistakes, and you're going to make mistakes in every game. BYU's got a good football team. But uh, I thought on offense and defense, we played very well. The only really hiccup we had in terms of teams was uh, the block field goal, which that was my fault. Trying a 58-yard field goal was, uh, was uh, probably over, over the cliff. We, uh, knowing that uh, they had two big guys that they'd put in the middle, you got to hit the ball lower. Kid hit a great kick. He just, uh, they got a hand on it. And so uh, first three quarters, it was, uh, uh, it was fun to watch our guys have fun, run around. And then uh, we had an uh, eye-opening experience. Fourth quarter, we uh, had, I think, maybe one yard offense, and they had getting close to 200. It's just total transformation. And you always go back and look for reasons why. You don't make excuses. You look for reasons. And uh, uh, it, it's hard, hard to put your finger on it. You know, we obviously punted four times. We went four and out three times. We never stopped them. We gave them a punt return, uh, but uh, the one area that uh, was a big concern and going into that game with a uh, pretty much a makeshift defensive secondary, we had way too many pass interference. And we gave them too many second chances, too many first downs. And uh, just uh, disappointing, not just to the players, but also the coaches in terms of how we played that fourth quarter because uh, that ball game should have come down to the last three or four minutes. And uh, we busted coverages. We did everything uh, just totally opposite of what we'd done the, the first three quarters. So uh, we've got some things to work on. Uh, we finished half the season three and three. We go back and look all, as we always do, look at back at the three games that we did lose. We were beat in the fourth quarter. And uh, we didn't, uh, against three good teams, we didn't play as well as the other teams did in the fourth quarter. And you can't play a three-quarter game. It, they, don't, they don't make those type of football games. So. We uh, will push that with our team. That's what we've got to do to get better. Uh, I think there's a lot of places we can get better in terms of technique and fundamentals. We gave up eight sacks. Three of them were really only offensive linemen. The other were backs, tight ends, and a couple on the quarterback holding the ball too long. You've got to get rid of it. You can't hold it back there for five seconds. So we'll address those things as we go this week. And uh, we look forward to a, a good challenge. Now, getting into uh, Connecticut, I think, is one of the most improved teams in the league. They've got a new quarterback that's really made them a better football team. Transfer from North Carolina State, set out last year, got a new offensive coordinator. They do a good job. They do multiple stuff, very similar to what, what we saw at the University of Miami. Two backs, one back, no backs. Uh, their quarterback was outstanding last week. I'd be surprised. I have not seen it. Uh, I don't keep up with MVPs of the league, but if he didn't get the MVP of the uh, conference, uh, he should have because he played a heck of a football game, even though they lost to South Florida. Their defense is uh, as good or better than it was last year, and they were very good last year. They, they're big up front. They're well coached. Bob Bianco, who coached here at one time, is doing a, uh, an unbelievable job with a team that he took over, and he's, he's kind of putting it uh, piece by piece together as he goes. He's doing it the right way. And so, uh, as I said earlier, there's not a touchdown difference between most teams in this league. And we'll have a huge challenge here this week. So looking forward to that. Uh, this is homecoming, our 100th anniversary of uh, uh, which I have here of Nippert Stadium. I'm talking about uh, redoing the inside of the stadium, not the press box. It was done a few years ago. Uh, we redid it. But uh, this is 100th anniversary of really doing something to the inner structure of, of Nippert Stadium. All this is done because uh, each year we'll have Under Armour will will pick one game out for to have a uniform for everybody, uh, the cheerleaders, the, the dance team, uh, the coaches, the, the players. This year we have the helmet that uh, recognizes Nippert Stadium, the memorial to the end of the stadium, and then our, our athletic building, building, which we're in. And uh, Under Armour will, uh, does that for each team that they represent. Uh, we appreciate that. So it's a totally different look, one-time deal. And then we'll get back next week uh, to our normal uh, uniforms. But uh, I think it's fun for fans. I think it's fun for students. 
everybody involved, football team, and it kind of it kind of gives you a shot in the arm of doing something different one time a year. So this is our shot, and uh, we look forward to it. But this should be a good game, homecoming. Uh, as I said earlier, it should be a fun time. So looking forward to uh, getting going and uh, trying to get back on the winning track because it's going to be this will be a tough game as as they all are. Questions. Yeah, you know, it's good, you know, and they know, they understand. We've talked about it, uh, about, uh, you know, playing four quarters. Uh, we played four quarters in the Miami-Florida game. We actually won that game in the fourth quarter. We scored two touchdowns, put it out of reach, and got the win. We, we kept our momentum. We didn't uh, self-destruct. Uh, I'm not going to call the BYU game a self-destruct in the fourth quarter. Uh, we knew going into that game, uh, as they always do out there in that altitude and that weather in, in 70,000 people. I thought our guys held their composure well. We didn't have, uh, I don't think, any illegal procedure penalties. That's the first time and probably the only time we'll be in a stadium where we can't really hear the snap count. We held our composure well. Uh, just looking at them on the sidelines in, in the fourth quarter, we were gassed. Uh, they were playing much faster than we were. And, uh, you know, we, we tried to play as many as we could going into the uh, the first, second, third quarter, knowing that the, they usually outplay people in the fourth quarter. They do it, they've done it this year, they've done it every year, they lose very few at home. And if you're going to beat them, you have got to withstand that fourth quarter. So, that being said, there's a lot of semblance to the Memphis game and the Temple game. We could have controlled the Temple game, we turned it over. The Memphis game, we couldn't stop them. And so, there's a if you go back and look at all of our three losses, there's different scenarios why each one of them happened. And as I told the players, we either correct it or it's going to happen again, uh, coaches and players. It's not just players' fault. You know, we could have done things in the fourth quarter to help our quarterback. We put him in a situation where we tried to throw it probably too much, didn't throw any screens, didn't do some things that we had planned, and we probably got away from our game plan because the momentum got away from us so quick. And sometimes you lose your patience and you can't do that in a game, especially on the road, in that kind of scenario. So yeah, our, our players are disappointed. Uh, we're all disappointed. We knew that the first six games was going to be very tough, you know, playing Miami and BYU. I knew Memphis was going to be how they were. Uh, I knew they were going to have a very good team coming back. Now it's no different going to this, these six games, though. I mean, everybody's about the same. So, uh, you know, you can't lick your wounds and, and think about them. You better get ready to go for the next game, because now we're on a regular routine. We only have one Friday night game left. and and we can get on a routine now, and hopefully we can improve because of some, some type of consistency. Did you feel like you had to talk to them about that, about just their mindset at this point? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of psychology that goes into football players and football teams because there's so many people involved. There's, but as you know, I, we had a team meeting Sunday. We, we put up the first three quarters uh, stats, and then I showed them highlights of the fourth quarter and compared them to what we did and at the end showed them the comparison of the stats in the third, uh, fourth quarter compared to the first three quarters. We won every st stat in the first three quarters. We didn't win one in the, in the fourth quarter. And that's the most important quarter. So talk about that. We did the same thing with Memphis. We did the same thing with Temple. Uh, very similar Memphis and, and uh, uh, BYU. Temple was different. You know, we just self-destructed ourselves in that game. And you, again, that's uh, that's, that's just another way to lose a game. Uh, we didn't self-destruct in this game. We, we uh, uh, you know, it's hard to put your finger on it. We lost our focus. We lost our intensity. When you lose that and you have some things go bad, you can't. You've got to regain it. Uh, you've got to try to regain the momentum, even though it's hard on the road, uh, which that's home field advantage. You've got to find some way to make a big play. And uh, we didn't do it as coaches or players. Well, we thought we had done that. You know, we do a lot of fourth quarter drills. We do a lot of one, two, and four minute drills in practice of how we're going to run the game. Uh, run it a little bit, run the clock when we're ahead by four minutes or behind four minutes. You do all those things, you talk about it. Uh, again, you go back just a week earlier or two weeks earlier against uh, Miami. We looked like a different team in the fourth quarter. We played well. Uh, we made plays. We were able to run it. We were able to throw it. And BYU is a lot like University of Miami. Uh, you know, there were some different uh, 
situations and scenarios. Again, uh, uh, you know, Hayden out there, I, I thought he did well for three quarters and he made some, he didn't make as good a decision. Sometimes you got to dump the ball off. He was trying to get too much back. We, you know, sometimes you get greedy in the fourth quarter as a coach and as a player, you think you got to get it all back at one time. And uh, the, <clears throat> that's not how you swing momentum. You swing momentum by gradually building it back. You're lucky if you block a punt or do something like happened in the Michigan-Michigan State game. I mean, that's, that's not luck. It just happens. But uh, the way you want it to happen in a fourth quarter like that is somehow, some way, you've got to get a fumble, get an interception, uh, make a play to turn that momentum. Because when we uh, got in that fourth quarter, you turn the volume up on those students and those fans and they got involved, and what happens is that get involved on the sideline. And you can tell just the energy from their football team. And we watched that. I showed the sideline of our sideline. I showed the, their sideline. Then I went back and showed the sideline of us in Miami and the sideline of theirs, you know, when, when we were on top. And, you know, the momentum is a huge thing in football, huge. And uh, if you, it's, it's confidence and being able to do, you know, what you were – planning on doing when things go bad, how do you regain it? And so uh, we, we do a lot of talking to our players about that. And we, we scheme for that also. I mean, it's not just talk you have to scheme for. In the secondary, you have some players first. <coughs> you mentioned uh, people like Andre Jones. Is, is he coming back? And, and I understand Coleman might be out. For yeah, Andre's had a concussion for a while. I don't know when he's coming back. You know, he's he's starter for us in the secondary. We lost. Uh, uh, Adrian Whitty broke his ankle, uh, and Miami, right after Miami, uh, uh, Col Grant Coleman broke his shoulder. So he's out for the season. So it is what it is. I mean, you got to you, you go with who you have, and we're playing players that we weren't expecting to play much beginning of the year. And uh, now they're not just out there playing. They're starters, and the guys behind them were, were redshirting at the beginning of the year, guys that were even, not even thinking about playing. So, but – you don't, you don't make excuses. Whoever you put out there has got to go. It's just unfortunate for us. That was an area of concern going in just with depth. And then we lost Whitty uh, twice in two years uh, early in the season. And he was our captain. He was a guy that got us lined up. I tell you, the guy that's playing well, though, Zach Edwards. He's playing real well, making a lot of plays. Uh, proud of him because he's out there getting youngsters lined up that hadn't played much. And somebody's got to be out there getting them, getting them going. And Zach never comes out. He gets them lined up. Uh, we made the move of trying to get Payne out at corner. And, you know, he blew a coverage, you know, to put us, I, I guess, was it by, to put him ahead? Might have tied us. I can't remember at that point what it was. But uh, uh, just a senior making a mistake. But he was also trying to help other guys get lined up. And, and that's what happens when you, when you can't really concentrate just on what you're doing. You've got, and you've got to work with other guys trying to make sure everybody's doing the right thing. Sometimes you make the wrong decision. And, and uh, we paid a pretty, pretty uh, big price for that, that mistake. Yeah, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to look at them Tuesday and Wednesday for the next six games. This thing will be over with here in less than around 40 days. So uh, we've told both of them we're going to work on Tuesday and Wednesday. Both will get the same amount because you can't just you can't do one with the second team and one with the first team. They'll both get the same amount of reps with the ones and twos, uh, along with Skelly. And uh, I'll help make the decision: demeanor, uh, leadership, uh, intensity, uh, and then you go to game plan, uh, execution, how the players are reacting. I mean, because again, your your quarterback. Uh, everybody reacts to your quarterback, not just your offensive players, but your kicking game. And, and not, not that Hayden uh, played as bad the other day that would lose his job. It's we've got another guy just as capable, so uh, with experience. And so I, I want to make sure that we continue to give Gunner every opportunity in, in practice. And, uh, and he knows when he gets in a game, he's got to be 100% ready and not – really know the speed of the game with the ones or whatever. So uh, once we'll, we'll make a decision on Wednesday night after practice or Thursday morning. And then on Thursday, then uh, starting quarterback, we'll get all with the ones and the backup, we'll get all with the twos in a team situation, which is around 100 and 115 plays. And that way, uh, you know, we 
feel good about the guy going in that's had enough reps with each group. You know Doug pretty well this time on campus. Is this a little fire under Yeah. Yeah, he's a little pissed off, to be honest with you. I would be too. But that's what you want. You want a guy that's really competitive. I don't want somebody that takes no for an answer. And, you know, he's been in my office. I coach, what have I got to do? And but he's been a team player. He's been behind Hayden. They're good friends. He just wants that chance. He wants the ball in his hand. You know, he wants to shoot that three pointer at the buzzer. And uh, he does. He's he's a he's a good quarterback. And so we're in a we're in a a, a great situation. Uh, not in a good position. In fact, it, it's hard to put it like that because you got two guys that that I think can really get the job done. And both of them are very similar. Uh, one's got more experience, though. The other one's probably a little bit more athletic. I mean, that's the difference in them right now. So uh, offensive line's comfortable with both of them. I talk to those guys. I talk to the receivers. I mean, there's no – it's a level playing field with the players. Now it's going to be all about execution and getting the job done. So whoever, if Gunner starts and Hayden got to go in, if you got your head between your legs, you're, you'll be done. You know, that, that, this guy that's not on the field has got to be the one really watching what's going on every snap, understanding what they're doing, what they're trying to do, listening on the sideline. So it's going to be one of those scenarios. Uh, you know, there's no short lease, as we saw last week. I wasn't going to pull the kid out because he was doing a pretty good job. We could have done it in the middle of the fourth quarter, but then that's not fair to Gunner, uh, going out there in a situation where he wasn't – he didn't really understand the speed of the game because the speed of the game got better for – BYU as it did for us, and uh, uh, that's that's not a scenario we, we thought would have made a difference. Of course, I'd have done it if I thought it was going to make a difference, but it wasn't the quarterback making the difference. It was just we were getting outplayed. Did you start five freshmen on defense the other day? <laughs> we did. According to my count. Don't tell me that. <laughs> huh? I try not. To, I try not to look at the. <laughs> I guess one way to look at that is it'll take dividends down down the road. But for now, how hard is it to get the job done? It's hard, you know. I was proud of them the first three quarters, you know, and I was a little surprised because we competed with them. We made some mistakes. Uh, we had some pass interferences we'd love to have back, and that's just from guys just panicking, you know, and that hadn't been out there much. And it was, if you, you know, standing on the sideline, it's hard to watch film. I was even surprised at their receivers. Be why they're big. They're not just, you know, rangy. They're big, physical. Uh, we did a good, uh, I thought, a uh, better than good job most of the time. And what we were, we were hit, what, 17 to 10 at halftime, something like that. And we would played well. We would played well in the red zone. We would created a turnover. Uh, guys were flying around. We made some mistakes. We're going to make mistakes the rest of the year. we got to get better as we go, though. And, you know, the thing, thing that uh, has happened is we, we've had to bring some guys up and start getting them ready because anything can happen on one play. And so, but, uh, you know, I feel good. that This defense is as good as what we had last year and will continue to get better. As you said, I think one or two guys only graduate. We've got everybody else back. So it's a scenario where at one point you don't want to be in this time. After spring practice, we'll say, man, we're glad we had to play all those guys during the year. We just hope we don't have to pay the price. We know where we're stronger on our football team. You know, we score a lot of points. And so that puts a lot of pressure on the offense, too. You only have six sacks this year, which is last in the conference. Um, obviously, that's a problem. You don't seem to put, put very much. So that's that's right. That, well, it, just because of just certain situations, we'd rather defend. Uh, there, there's, there's quarterbacks that you like to pressure. There's quarterbacks that you want to defend. Last week was a defending game. Miami of Florida was a defending game. Uh, we felt better about seven, eight guys in pass coverage than we did trying to match guys up and, uh, uh, you know, playing one-on-one -on -one too much because it's, we, there, was a, there was a definite mismatch last week if we got in too much one-on-one -on -one in pass coverage because just the height guys. But they, they disadvantaged everybody, and, and most everybody pretty much played them what we did, how we did in the secondary. But uh, if you told me we was going to play them like that, you know, barring a couple of plays here or there, you know, I'd have been thrilled about it defensively. Now, 
if we're going to rush three and four, we're not going to get a lot of sacks. And as we get into conference play now, we're going to have to make some changes. We're going to, have to do some different things. Uh, uh, we're going to try. We, you know, now that our guys are a little bit more experienced in the secondary, we've, we've got to give our our front a chance. Put more pressure on quarterbacks. And uh, uh, you know, we, that's one thing we've been talking about even before BYU and the open date of changes and trying to get more out of the defense other than other than uh, uh, defending. Uh, last year we played quite a bit of man coverage. Not that we'll play a lot of man, but we'll play play some zone, you know, zone blitz, stuff like that. We, we don't do much of that. And we hadn't just the simple fact that we hadn't had consistent week-to-week -week guys back uh, on the defense that uh, learned what we're doing.